Charlie Rose interviewing one of the leaders of Hamas. His name is Khalid Mishal. He asked him some interesting questions, tough but fair, and uh, interesting answers. So let's begin. We uh, are not fanatics, we are not fundamentalists, we do not uh, actually uh, uh, fight the Jews because they are Jews per se, we do not uh, fight any other races, we fight the occupiers. On the contrary, we actually respect uh, the religious people, uh, we uh, uh, ask for tolerance, uh, for coexistence between the Buddhists, uh, the Jews, the Christians and the Muslims. Uh, as you know, God created us as nations, we are different. Uh, and. Uh, the Quran says that in order for the nations to live together and coexist so together I think without I, occupation and without any so I think I, blockade. I, it's a good question by uh, Charlie Rose. He's going to expand upon it in a second. Uh, and it's a fine enough answer by Hamas. I don't agree with Hamas's strategy. Uh, they think that they're going to beat Israel uh, by firing, what, ro smaller rockets at them? Militarily, Charlie Rose is going to ask about that too. I mean, it's a fool's errand. It's not the right approach. They should fight with nonviolence. They should be brave in uh, going past checkpoints if they need to, but do it in a nonviolent way. Mahmoud Abbas in the West Bank has a much better idea uh, follow a diplomatic strategy, ask for admission into the United Nations, which actually scares Israel a lot more. And they, Israel's answer to that is horrible. No. We got to join the UN, but they shouldn't. Why? You say they shouldn't go the violent route. I agree. They should go the nonviolent route, the United Nations. Israel doesn't have a good answer for that. But Hamas helps them by doing these stupid, stupid violent attacks, including against civilians. Now, here he says, look, I don't attack the Jews because they're Jews. I attack them because they're occupying me. I understand the point that he thinks that they're being an armed resistance. Uh, but one, again, it's not the right strategy. And two, if that if that really is your motivating factor, then I would take out all the stupid language you have in your charter against, you know, Israel and Jews in general. You know, this whole idea, which they're going to get into more in a second, about does Israel have a right to exist, dude? Whether you like it or not, they exist. Get beyond it. The question is whether you're going to exist as a state. Right? That's what you should focus on when you're finally getting a chance to talk to the Western media, which you rarely get a chance to do. The Israeli officials are all over Western media. This is your one chance. And you know, the first answer is okay, but then the rest I, I think is gonna devolve. Let's watch. You believe in the coexistence of peoples, and therefore you believe in the coexistence of Palestinians and Israelis in the Middle East. I cannot coexist with occupation. Without occupation, you can coexist. I'm ready to coexist with the Jews. It's one thing to say you want to coexist with the Jews, it's another thing you want to coexist with the state of Israel. Do you want to coexist with the state of Israel? Do you want to represent, do you want to recognize Israel as a Jewish state? No. I said I do not want to live with a state of occupiers. I do coexist with other I'm religions. Assuming they're no longer occupiers. At that point, do you want to coexist and recognize their right to exist as they would recognize your right to exist? When we have a Palestinian state, then the Palestinian state will decide on its policies. You cannot actually ask me about the future. I answered you, but Palestinian people can have their say when they have their own state without occupation. In natural situations, they can decide the policies. All right, now Charlie Rose has asked him an untenable question, which is good for him. He's uh, doing the interview the right way. You challenge your guests to get to the right answers. It's a probing question uh, done exactly right. Uh, so the reason it's untenable is because Hamas has this point in their negotiations and their non existent so called negotiations with Israel uh, that they will not uh, agree to say that Israel has the right to exist. Only in the final peace deal will they give the concession that they think, okay, Israel exists. The world's worst negotiating strategy, if you ask me. Uh, but so when Charlie Rose asks him, okay, do you think Israel exists? Well, either he's got to say, no, 
I don't think they should exist, which sounds ridiculous, right? Or he's got to give away his main uh, bargaining chip at the negotiation table and go, yeah, they have a right to exist. Oh, damn it, now we got nothing. <laughs> okay. Now, in reality, you can tell what his actual answers are through two things. One, we already know that unofficially through Iran, they, Hamas has let it be known that they will accept those terms if there is a peace deal at the end. Number two, you saw at the end of his answer there, well, if the Palestinians agree that you know Israel should exist, well, then what can we do? That's his way of saying at the end when there's a peace deal, obviously that's what we'll give up. Now, why is this such a dumb negotiation strategy? Because it allows Israel to paint you as unreasonable and according to some, genocidal. Because you, don't, you wouldn't even allow Israel to exist, you would wipe it off the map, you would kill everybody there, right? And whether you think you are going to allow that or not allow that is entirely irrelevant. It's, I mean, if you wanted to help Israel in negotiations, you couldn't help them more than by having this stance. <laughs> so, what, what is there to gain from this? You think Israel actually gives a damn if you say that they have a right to exist? They're laughing at you, man. Of course they have a right to exist. That's not the question, you idiot. The question is, do you have a right to exist? Why didn't you turn around and say to Charlie Rose, hey, that's a fascinating theoretical question on Israel's right to exist. When in reality, the Palestinian state does not exist because Israel won't allow it, that's why I'm doing resistance. But Hamas has always had the wrong strategy. They have the wrong strategy in terms of violence. They have the wrong negotiation strategy that paints them as the bad guys. Uh, you know whether you think they are the bad guys or not. If you're on Hamas's side, well, then that's a stupid strategy, isn't it? Because even though you're being blocked from existence, you're getting all the blame for saying theoretically you would block Israel from existence. I mean, it's impossible to not feel bad for the Palestinians when these are the guys representing them. Okay, now we get on to the question of. Um, do you really think you're going to beat Israel militarily? I, mean, I can't wait for this answer. Do you believe that you can solve this by violence? Do you believe you can solve this with a military power? Is this going to end because one side is militarily going to defeat the other? No. In our culture as Arabs and Muslims, we have a prophet saying, the prophet peace be upon him said, the prophet had two choices and he followed the easiest choice. That means we ought to follow the easiest path, the better path. As a Palestinian, I want to be liberalized, I want a state, I want to live without occupation. You in, the, in America, the American Revolution, was it peaceful? Did you not kick the uh, British out uh, the nations uh, if they uh, if they have the uh, a peaceful window uh, to reach peace then they will better because we don't like to kill our sons and daughters but if we don't have uh, or if we don't have uh, the peace uh, then the resistance is legitimate so the world uh, has two choices they need to help us peacefully to reach uh, the state or we will expel this occupation from our land so unless the world will take the Israelis out of the West Bank and Gaza, you will expel them militarily. That's your objective. You believe you can do that. I do believe this as I see you now. It is a conviction. Why? Because. Time and time again, the history of nations says that peoples have the upper hand over the occupation. I have a will, I can die because of Israel. I cannot live uh, uh, under the occupation. The occupation is the worst thing that you can ever imagine. So every single Palestinian can die for the next generations to live in peace and freedom. So for 47 years you've been using your armed resistance and your violence that you're thinking that you're going to outwill them what in 147 years in 4700 years how are you going to do that that's not a strategy it's just ridiculous man it's it, you have a responsibility look whether we like it or we don't Hamas won an election 
uh, in the Palestinian territories, right? Now, of course, as soon as they won the election, Israel said, and the US said, democracy, we didn't really mean it. No, 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 you don't get to choose your leaders, right? So, but in reality, at one point, the Palestinians chose these guys as their leaders, which is a terrible choice if you ask me, right? But their strategy has been the same for 47 years. It's like the Cuban embargo. Do we think that's ever going to war on drugs? These things that are obvious failures that we just continue for decades anyway. Uh, yeah, my uh, military disadvantage against Israel was uh, overwhelming in the beginning, and it has now become devastating. Uh, yet I'm going to continue on that path. Well, only a stupid person would do that, right? Now, he might have a fine rhetorical point about, hey, you're American revolutionaries. Uh, they picked up muskets, didn't they, right? Yes, but those are different times. Like if you're just talking about it in terms of military strategy, we had the home advantage. Britain was all the way over there. They had muskets, we had muskets. The Israelis have fighter jets. You have these tiny little rockets that aren't doing much damage, plus they have this thing called Iron Dome. I mean, even if you thought that the armed resistance was the right way to go, which it clearly is not. You're living in a different time, and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a greatly ironic statement in the middle of that answer, as Hamas has chosen the path of violence. Now, why don't you talk about state violence, that Israel does not allow you to even leave your own so-called country, right? Because of course it's not a country, because they don't allow it. You don't control your own borders, you don't control your own military, you don't control anything inside Gaza, let alone the West Bank, right? You have settlements in the West Bank. Why don't you say, hey, what do you think about Israel's strategy of using state violence against our people? No, but the Palestinians don't have those representatives, they have these guys. And his answer is, well, I'm going to continue the same wrong strategy until the end of time. Does not give Palestinians a lot of hope.